Hey, good morning, everyone. Today is a new month. It is October the 1st. It's Thursday, October the 1st, and this is your daily word of encouragement. We've got another beautiful fall morning today. It's nice and cool and brisk outside, and so hopefully that uh, that, that that weather and uh, the changing of the calendar to a new month will definitely, in and of, of itself, be an encouragement to you and help your day go well today. And I hope also you get a chance to start with uh, these morning devotions, uh, or whenever you get to watch these, um, if you're watching these with any consistency, I hope that this serves to be exactly what I call it, a word of encouragement um, to help both you and myself, because it certainly helped to me as I do these, uh, to be able to follow Jesus more closely each and every day. So all this week we've been focusing on this character, or, uh, or this, um, this name, this label or title of Jesus as the Lamb of God. And, uh, the idea of a lamb, every time we see it in scripture, anytime a lamb is mentioned, it's in reference to sacrifice. Um, the, the structure of the sacrifice system in the Old Testament uh, was all about demonstrating to the Israelites just exactly how costly sin is. Um, it's, it's life and death. And so as these animals would be sacrificed and would lose their lives as a sacrifice, as a, as an, as a, a symbol of atonement um, that God was ultimately making for their sin, not the animal. Um, it was a demonstration that you know sin costs. It, it, it hurts. It destroys. It kills. I mean, the sights, the sounds, the symbols, all of it uh, was indicative of the fact of what what sin can do in our lives and does through our lives when we're caught in it. And so um, that system was all about trying to uh, help bring Israel back to God and, and recognize that there is a godly way that is always the best way. Um, but it, again, it takes faith to live a way. It takes faith to trust that living uh, a life of surrender living a life uh, that, of loving others sacrificially truly is the best way, the best expense of our lives. So with that in mind, with this idea, again, of Jesus being our sacrifice and the, this model that he came to show for us of what, what life lived in God's kingdom looks like as it's lived out, I want to take us to today's passage, which is found in John chapter 15. And we're going to hit this passage again in a few weeks when we talk about Jesus being the vine um, because that's, that's, that's kind of how this section begins. And so we'll come back to the first part of, of chapter 15 in a few weeks in, in one of our upcoming sermons. Um, but I want to focus on the latter part of this passage uh, in John chapter 15. Uh, so these words are spoken by Jesus at the Last Supper to his disciples. And again, he's trying to prepare them for what's coming next. Not just the crucifixion um, and, and the resurrection, but what life's going to be like for them when he's gone when he ascends back to heaven and when the kingdom is going to move through them and their leadership. And so in, uh, in chapter 15, verse 9, he try, he, again, he's trying to prepare them for that of, of, listen, everything that I've done for you has been about preparation for this next step. He says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. So remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you so that my joy uh, may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I don't call you servants any longer because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I've made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in the name of the Father, uh, and, and ask in my name, the Father will give you. So this is my command: love each other. There's a few. Uh, there's a lot to dig through in that. But there's a few key words that I want to focus on in our time together this morning. First of all, Jesus says this is all. all it all comes back to love. Everything that He came to do and expresses it comes back to the, that, that simple command to love. Jesus said the greatest expense of our life is to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. He says. You know the, the greatest sign of, of, of obedience, uh, to, that, excuse me, the greatest sign of, of your love for the Father is obedience. That you remain in that you remain in my commands. He talked about sacrifice again. He says, "Greater life has no one than this that you would lay down one's life for his friends." And I think a lot of times we think about the people that we care about, and if their lives were on the line, or if we could you know donate a kidney or whatever it might be to help save someone's life. Um, that we absolutely would do that, like no questions asked. I, you know, you jump in front of a bullet for somebody that you love, or you'd be willing to, you know, give your life to protect somebody else that you love. But it's very rarely that any of us are ever asked to do that. Um, certainly, we know people who, by career, by vocation, who do that. I mean, people in law enforcement, people who uh, serve with fire departments, and of course, people who serve in our military um, are asked to do that for complete strangers. 
But I want to make it a little more personal. With the people that are closest to you, um, it's very rarely that we're ever asked to put our lives on the line. But every single day, we're called to die to ourselves and love others and put the needs of others even before our own. Um, so every single day, we're called to live sacrificially as if we were laying down our life so that the love of Jesus Christ might be seen more clearly to one another. That, that's what he's calling us to here. That, that's the lifestyle he's calling us to. Now, each of these disciples would ultimately one day give their life for their faith, with the exception of John. They would be martyred for sharing the gospel. But that would be many years after faithful service, after daily faithfully laying down their life so that God's love could be seen clearly in them. Uh, another word I want to point out to you here is friend. Jesus says, I no longer call you my servants because a servant is not fully aware of the master's business, but I've, I've clued you guys in fully. Now, at this point in time, the disciples didn't quite understand all those clues that Jesus had given to them. But he says, you know, I'm, I'm preparing you guys to take this business over from me. Um, when I leave, uh, my mission of love and forgiveness and grace and mercy is going to go through you. So Jesus looks at you and I as his disciples and says, you're my friends. You're my friends. I'm, I'm still your Lord. I'm still your Savior. But I'm calling you friend because I have now invited you into a relationship with me. And as I have loved you, I want you now to go and love one another. And then the last word I want to point out to you here is fruit. Um, we certainly know that in the scriptures it talks about trees often and bearing fruit. But this is not, you know, this is the, the, the kind of fruit that Jesus seeks is that fruit that will last. When we love others sacrificially, it can have not just lifelong impact, but eternal impact. When we'll do it faithfully, and we'll do it consistently. There's a lot to unpack there in today's passage, but there's a few little po points that I wanted to just share with you today that, that I feel like God's put on my heart and that I hope to see uh, lived out more consistently in my walk with Him. And I hope those are an encouragement to you. Uh, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, again, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for your example of love. And Lord, I pray that as we go throughout today, that we would, would indeed look for opportunities to lay down our life for others. Um, Lord, it's, again, very rare, very uh, un uh, unlikely that we'll be asked to lay down our physical life for anyone. Um, but certainly, Lord, every day there are opportunities for us to, to live sacrificially, um, to, to lay down our, uh, our interest and, and our self-centeredness so that your love might be seen more clearly in us and through us. So, Lord, just make us be aware. Make us be aware of those opportunities because if we do love you, then we're going to keep your commands, and your greatest command is to love one another. Lord, we love you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. God bless everyone.